okay so let's start with the the basics okay so you know uh, how many of our agri graduates bsc agri okay right so you are non agri right okay so any science background or engineering engineering yeah engineering. engineering okay right okay <clears throat> right botany okay so yes okay so we we'll start from the basics okay so i will give you idea so because many non agri students are also attending this session so i will give you basic idea about how to choose optional okay so based on the weightage you can uh, the pros and cons you can choose optional okay right see there are uh, two kinds of subjects uh, in the upsc okay so broadly uh, humanity subjects and the uh, technical subjects okay pure science and one more category applied science okay <clears throat> applied science okay but that also come come under the science subjects okay right so here in the humanities subjects we have uh, the very popular optionals uh, sociology geography political science okay so they are the very popular optionals in india okay so humanities subjects and uh, technical subjects uh, pure science botany zoology okay and uh, agricultural forestry are the applied science not pure science okay agriculture forestry and all okay right so agriculture comes under uh, the science subject right okay so what are the pros and cons of uh, these uh, humanities subjects and uh, the science subjects okay right so first uh, question uh, first thing if you are a agri graduate then definitely you can so without any second thought you can uh, directly choose agriculture optional okay no need to worry about that okay so but for other uh, students okay students with other background uh, science background botany zoology uh, biotechnology microbiology okay and engineering students i will okay you can decide after this session okay right so what are the difficulties in the humanities subjects and what are the advantages of humanities subjects see the humanities subjects are very popular and uh, we have been studying the subjects since our uh, school days uh, the geography sociology political science okay so you can easily uh, no need to uh, cover the entire syllabus okay they will provide a syllabus okay but it's uh, purely the marks the scoring is based on your writing skill okay most of the questions are analytical questions okay you don't need to make it up whereas in the science subjects they will provide a definite syllabus okay and you have to uh, read each and every part of the syllabus each and every part of the the, uh, the word in the syllabus is very very important okay so you have to make proper notes and you have to read by heart okay so many theories concepts scientific name right but in the humanities subjects no need to worry about that it's purely based on your your uh, analytical the most of the questions are analytical questions so based on your writing skill you can score very good marks but that is also the disadvantage uh, so you must have a proper very good analytical skill and a writing skill moreover uh, these subjects okay they are subject to the examiner's interpretation because they are subjective in nature not objective okay so the science subjects are objective in nature and the humanities subjects are subjective in nature okay so the examiner he may agree with your points or may not agree okay so based on the, the opinion based questions for right <clears throat> okay so these are the advantages and disadvantages so based on that you can decide okay so analyze your strength so which area you are very strong okay so i can uh, read the scientific names i can uh, make it up okay i have a uh, very good memory capacity okay then you can choose the science subjects and uh, students with the science background they can easily choose the science subjects okay for engineering students other category they can decide okay sir i am good at the writing skill and i have analytical skill and moreover uh, i am not uh, i am hated uh, the memory power okay so i am saying the by heart okay so you have to read each and every word in the syllabus okay no need to read but simply you can follow the, the current affairs okay for many of these questions opinion based questions okay no need to follow the, the entire syllabus okay just you can uh, go through the overall the syllabus okay and you can uh, the current affairs is very, very important okay so i have very good writing skill so they can i can choose the humanity subjects okay and decide right okay so here i will list out the advantages of the agriculture okay why you have to choose agriculture okay for useful for both agri students as well as non agri okay so based on that you can decide so this is the highest success rate in india among the major optionals okay i'm talking about major optionals so agriculture is one of the major optional okay sociology political science geography okay public administration 
agriculture okay so these are the major uh, anthropology okay history so these are the major optionals in india so uh, among the major optionals agriculture has the highest success rate okay you can see this fact in the upsc annual report okay so the success rate is around 10% uh, h that means <clears throat> if 100 candidates are appearing for mains exam so 10 out of 100 okay they are clearing with the agriculture optional whereas for other subjects okay it is around 8 7 7.5 9.5 okay so these are the the facts for other subjects other optionals popular optionals okay so agriculture is the highest success rate and one common uh, question i face from students like, every year okay why there is no uh, toppers in agriculture okay so you know the highest success rate in agriculture that's okay but most of the top uh, the toppers in uh, upsc are from uh, sociology geography political science public administration okay so if you uh, look at the actual number you won't get true picture so you have to look at the the proportion you have to see the proportion see so the number of candidates okay see um, the sociology but you know the popular optionals every year more than uh, 1000 students are appearing with uh, these subjects for mains okay and talking about mains okay right so if 1000 students are uh, writing mains from these subjects okay only 80 or 90 students clearing with the uh, only 80 or 90, 90 students, okay, they are clearing in the final result. That means the ratio is around 8% to 9%. Okay. But in agriculture, around 150 or 100 students, they are writing mains. Okay. So you have to see these numbers, the proportion. Okay. You should not look at the actual numbers, sir. In, agri in sociology, 80 students are clearing in the final result. But in agriculture, only 10 students. Is that the correct way? okay you have to see the number of candidates appearing for mains okay out of 100 10 students out of 1000 80 students okay so that's why so so what's the problem with the agriculture only 100 students are appearing for mains so the problem with agriculture the mostly for the science background students okay actually many candidates are appearing uh, for agriculture okay the many candidates they choose agriculture as their option more than every year the more than 1000 candidates they are preparing with agriculture optional but the main problem with the science background students they didn't clear prelims because of CSAT. Okay. I know many, okay, every year uh, in our batch also, okay, uh, more than 200 students are studying uh, in agriculture, okay. But many of these students, I know they are very good potential, potential candidates, okay. We conduct, usually we conduct the class test at a periodic interval, we conduct, conduct class test. So during class test, I have seen many papers. They are very potential in agriculture, but if they write mains, they will get good marks. But the problem is, most of the students, okay, only out of if 10 students are uh, uh, appearing for prelims, only two students are clearing with the uh, aggregate optional, the prelim stage. Okay, so at the in our uh, class, okay, the five months course, I will also at the end of the course, I will also uh, give some inputs for how to clear prelims, okay, every year. Okay, so what because uh, I cleared prelims in my first attempt, okay, and I never uh, failed in prelims, I cleared all the prelims, okay, in my end. The first attempt in my last attempt, I never failed in any one of the prelims. Okay, All right. So I will give some input inputs. Okay, how to clear the prelims also. All right. So this is the problem. Okay, and uh, last year, uh, uh, fortunately, uh, on a very good result. Okay, we have uh, topper. Okay, in agriculture, so Swati Sri scored three hundred three. So that is a very good score in agriculture optional. Okay, so you see, is the Tamil Nadu topper in the civil service examination. Okay, last year right and uh, so this is the fact okay you must understand these facts that's why the number of candidates are less okay in the agriculture but the success rate is very high okay right so agri stand agri students you can uh, without second thought you can choose okay right so object is subject yeah okay it's objective in nature so not at the the examiner's interpretation Okay, if you give the correct fact, you can score very well. Okay, suppose if they are asking this question, DNA replication. Okay, explain the mechanism of DNA replication. Right? An answer. Okay, the same answer. Okay, you are not going to interpret it. We are not going to analyze it. Okay, just you have to give the Watson and Crick model. Okay, the DNA replication model. Okay, if you draw the diagram along with the points, okay, DNA replication mechanisms, you will get out of 10, you will get 8 marks. If you give the correct answer with the correct diagram and the facts. 
right so it's objective nature right and uh, most of the questions are direct questions okay so almost 99% of the questions are direct questions very rare only in the paper one we have some uh, very rare uh, analytical questions okay and most of the questions are direct questions okay so all you have to do is you have to study the syllabus and for the in the syllabus okay for each and every topic you have to prepare notes okay and you have to write answer that's all and one more thing uh, in a science subjects it's a common for all science subjects not only agriculture for botany zoology geology okay for all science subjects it's a common thing if you go through the last 10 years question paper most of the questions will be repeated every year okay around the 60 questions will be repeated, exactly repeated they don't even change the word okay so this is the biggest advantage of choosing uh, science based optionals okay right <clears throat> and uh, overlapping syllabus with the gs yeah okay but, uh, when compared to agriculture with the other science subjects the same advantage for example botany also the same advantage uh, subjective in objective in nature uh, questions are direct questions syllabus is very definite syllabus okay but the problem is uh, botany is entirely different not overlapping with the gs but agriculture since it's applied science okay so here uh, we have seen and the prelims questions recently they are asking more questions from agriculture the prelims okay and uh, agriculture geography and animal science combinedly they are asking more than 13 15 questions in prelims because these three are interrelated subjects agriculture geography and uh, environmental science so you must have a geographical knowledge to understand agriculture okay so these are very very important subjects these three subjects so commonly they are asking more than 15 questions in gs okay and uh, in the gs paper 3 in our uh, gs portion okay paper 3 uh, they have more than uh, four five questions from agriculture okay so that's another advantage and uh, definite syllabus syllabus is very definite okay and uh, just now i told you the questions are directly from the syllabus out of syllabus questions there is no possibility of the out of syllabus questions okay all questions are direct and these questions are directly from the syllabus okay so all you have to do is you have to cover the entire syllabus that is advantage as well as disadvantage challenge you cannot miss a single word in the syllabus okay entire syllabus is important but in the humanities subjects you can overall we can cover the okay so just you have to understand the basic concept that's all okay the remaining you can write on your own but here in agriculture we have to uh, prepare proper notes for each and every topic in the syllabus okay and if you prepare in that manner definitely you can score very high marks so uh, the 300 is achievable the magic number okay crossing 300 because nowadays uh, 280 is a very good score in optional 270 280 is a very good score in optional okay so the magical number 300 is the magic number we can easily achieve right <clears throat> okay and uh, one more advantage in agriculture uh, you can also write IFOIS, okay, Indian Forest Service, okay, because in Forest Service, uh, we cannot choose humanity subjects, okay. Again, suppose if you are choosing sociology, then uh, again in the Forest Service, you have to choose two more optionals. Mostly the students, okay, they choose for, they go for uh, forestry and geology, okay. But uh, for agri students, they can choose agriculture and botany, because agriculture and forestry combination is not allowed, right. So for Indian Forest Service, you can also appear for Forest Service, but the syllabus is same. Or except except the question pattern everything is same okay you are studying the same syllabus same content for forest service also okay so we can uh, one more optional botany alone okay so we can study only two subjects for uh, the ifos and ias okay and uh, recently uh, we have very good result in the indian forest service examination so four candidates with uh, agriculture and botany combination they cleared uh, last year okay uh, all india rank number 38 51 52 and 77 Okay, so four candidates clear with the agriculture and botany combination, the recent uh, Indian Forest Service examination. Okay, and uh, one more thing, <clears throat> I went to interview with the uh, agri botany combination. Okay, so I have gone to interview for five times, uh, three times for uh, IAS with uh, agriculture and uh, two times for uh, Indian Forest Service with agriculture and botany combination. Okay, so I can personally guide you. We are not taking botany optional here. Okay, but I, I can personally guide you for botany preparation. Okay, All right. <clears throat> So these are the, the advantages, okay, for agriculture, choosing agriculture optional. Right. So based on that, you can decide, okay. Right. 
so whether it is suitable for all candidates okay despite these advantages namakku sila drawbacks irukku okay va okay so uh, it is highly suitable for uh, only agri graduates you can choose okay, no problem right so agri graduates they can choose and uh, non agri graduates uh, with a science background uh, bsc botany bsc zoology okay uh, bio biotechnology microbiology right so and the uh, allied subjects of agriculture horticulture forestry bsc horticulture bsc forestry okay so those standards okay yeah <clears throat> they can choose uh, botany op the agriculture optional right and for uh, engineering students if you have studied biology in your plus 1 plus 2 in the higher secondary okay if you have studied biology the biomaths okay they can choose because paper 2 is little bit technical okay paper 2 it covers uh, genetics uh, plant breeding seed technology plant physiology okay actually you might have studied these subjects in your plus 1 plus 2 the photosynthesis the respiration okay and the mendel's uh, genetics the mendel's laws of inheritance okay so you can easily understand okay if you have studied biology the biomaths in your plus 1 plus 2 higher secondary you can understand very easily okay in the paper 2 that's why i recommend uh, uh, even though okay you are engineering students you can choose agriculture optional okay provided that you must have studied another biology in your higher secondary okay that's important and uh, students with the computer science i won't recommend okay sir i have studied uh, the biology up to 10th only okay abadina na definitely it is not suitable for you okay you can uh, decide some other optionals okay right and uh, based on your personal interest okay we will discuss okay i will provide my personal number at the end of the session we can uh, you can also call me okay if any, you have any doubts right okay so this is our syllabus <coughs> so are you clear that now we are going to our uh, uh, the subject specific okay agriculture the syllabus part and uh, what we are providing okay in agriculture uh, in a shankar rais academy so what are the, the specialties of the course okay the features of this course right so this is our syllabus for agriculture okay paper 1 and paper 2 so paper 1 pa nareya per enna paduvinga appadina most of the the non agri graduates uh, they see only paper 1 okay so it's like gs so we can easily prepare uh, agriculture okay that's our common thought okay right i agree okay so uh, paper 1 is uh, it's like a gs paper the soil erosion soil management okay uh, forestry extension so most of the topics are gs like nature okay the nutrient management and uh, the cropping system cropping pattern these subjects again you will study in your gs the gs paper 3 right okay but the problem is uh, paper 1 is very difficult to score you can easily cover paper 1 but a scoring point of view it's very difficult okay and a paper 2 it's purely technical nature right so mostly the agri graduates they can easily understand these subjects okay and uh, just now i told you with the biology background okay students with the botany and the biology background they can easily understand right so most of the papers in paper 2 are technical so here our target is 300 okay so here we can able to score more than 160 in paper 2 and 140 around 140 is very good score in paper 1 so this is our target okay but you can easily cover paper 1 okay so for entire agriculture it will take around 4 to 5 months to complete the entire syllabus right and out of this 4 months okay the one month just one month is enough to cover the paper 1 and the remaining 3 months will be needed for paper 2 okay right so this is our target so if you cross more than 140 and 160 in paper on paper 2 then definitely you can cross 300 okay all right <clears throat> and one more thing i want to say <clears throat> see in a uh, upsc okay um the one year preparation okay it's a one year preparation so you are uh, a june batch okay we are starting the july batch right so in our preparation okay so this is the time for your mains preparation okay so this is the correct time for your mains preparation so before december you have to complete the optional and other the gs static portions okay mains point of view you have to prepare mains point of view at this time right so before december you have to complete your uh, mains preparation okay then after december you can exclusively focus on our prelims preparation right then after prelims again okay we go for uh, we only at the time of okay the time gap between the prelims and the mains okay you have only 2 to 3 months time gap so in the time you have time only for revision right 
so you can attempt test series okay if you already prepared the optional before december then we can do only a revision and we can attempt test series this is the idea okay right for every students okay this is the strategy for every not only agriculture okay and optional okay. usually this is the time for your optional preparation you are the correct time okay so julie other uh, five, five months time so along with the course we conduct a class test so along with the course you can also at the end of this course you can also complete the, the agriculture optional okay right and one more thing uh, optional score is very very important okay we cannot uh, exactly determine the gs it is not in our hands okay because you know, gs is a common paper okay so every year uh, more than uh, 10 lakhs candidates are appearing for civil examination well, more than uh, 10000 students they will write mains okay so in the gs we cannot expect a very high score it is not in our hands sometimes you will get a very good score or sometimes a low score okay but the average score in gs you can get around 100 to 110 that is average score okay but essay optional and interview these are the deciding factors okay so if you are very good at scoring okay the essay paper 140 around 150 140 and optional above 300 okay definitely you will get any one of the service so your service is determined by optional score and your rank is determined by interview score okay if you cross 280 above in optional definitely you will get interview call and if you score average marks in gs and uh, sa definitely you get any one of the service okay and your rank is determined by your interview score the top 100 rank that's purely based on your interview score okay so crossing 280 is very very important okay well, right. <clears throat> so optional has a huge weightage okay in this pattern <clears throat> right so this is our syllabus paper one uh, most of the topics are uh, gs like okay uh, the ecology environment topic okay ecology environment and uh, agronomy this is the major subject in agriculture okay the agronomy is nothing but uh, the basic crop cultivation practices okay so the weed science cropping system cropping pattern irrigation okay those areas and the soil science studying about the soil and the forestry area uh, nutrient management application of the fertilizers okay those area and aggregate extension so they are the, the extension agents okay they are the, the extension agents so they provide a link between the the scientists and the farmers okay they are the field level agents okay aggregate extension and the farm management okay so how to run a farm uh, like a business okay right so these are the subjects in paper one and a paper two genetics plan breeding technical okay genetics plan breeding uh, seed technology uh, biotechnology plant physiology horticulture entomology and pathology deals with the pest and disease management okay and uh, nutrition and uh, food security but many agri graduates they hesitate to take agriculture because of uh, the entomology and pathology but don't worry about that okay it's very easy okay so we can easily cover the entomology and pathology but okay right so actually it's a very uh, easy subject okay we can easily cover uh, i will provide okay i will give you uh, how to cover those areas okay right <coughs> right <coughs> so okay so what are the features of our course in our uh, academy see uh in fact okay usually i recommend uh, standard books for agriculture okay there are a list of uh, seven eight books are there for agriculture okay the standard books but uh, the difficulty okay in patra being another profile okay i have gone to entry for five times okay and i missed the service by just nine marks or ten marks every year okay all right so the problem is i worked uh, too much on optional subjects almost on the i did research on optional subjects Okay, during May 2010, there were two subjects, two optional subjects in UPSC, in the civil services itself, okay. So, at the time, I got a 350 in geography, all India level top score, okay, in 2010, okay. And agriculture, I, I scored more than 300, okay. I went to interview only because of my optional score. I didn't focus enough on GS preparation and essay preparation. That's the problem, okay. So almost I did a research on optional subject, I uh, entirely, I allotted more time for optional preparation. I got very good score optional, but actually I didn't score well in the GS and the essay. 
that's the problem okay right so just why that's why i missed a service narrowly by the 9 marks 10 marks okay right so uh, the difficulty the main difficulty in agriculture is you have to refer more than uh, 7 8 books apart from that you have to refer internal sources okay because many topics are not directly covered in the books okay especially paper 1 right so that's why uh, to reduce the time okay i have last two years i have been working on this material okay exclusively for agriculture a single comprehensive material for agriculture for both paper and paper 2 it's a 2000 page document it covers the entire subjects okay see the content in paper 1 okay it covers the entire syllabus and paper 2 also a single document a single reference book for you don't need to search uh, the topics from the standard reference books you don't need to waste your time okay it saves a lot of your time for a single document again and again okay because the revision is the key in order to score high marks, okay. So you have to revise again and again. That's all with the same material, right? Okay. So at the in the class, I will uh, tell you how to uh, prepare with this material, okay? Right? How to proceed with this material? I will tell you, right? Okay. So you will get this material in the along with the course, okay? Right? So uh, uh, single reference, okay? No need to refer any other books. I can guarantee, okay? Hundred percent, I can say this. You don't need to refer any other books for agriculture. Okay, right. So, because uh, I prepared this material from the handbook of agriculture, handbook of horticulture, and the internet source of the ministry websites, everything. Okay, right. Okay. <clears throat> so, let's see a small topic. A topic Patalama or demo class. Okay. Right. So, cropping intensity. Kelly Bitter Vingla. So, there is a concept called in agriculture cropping intensity. Okay, agri students, you know that, right? Cropping intensity. Right. What is cropping intensity? In simple terms, we can say the number of crops grown in a year. That is called a cropping intensity. Number of crops grown in a year. So, here number of crop means not the actual number of crops, okay. It is not a count, okay. The number of crops means uh, how many times you are cultivating the land in a year, okay. How many times you are cultivating the land in a year, that is called a number of crops, okay. So, for example, uh, in your, okay, suppose if you are owning a farm, okay, you cultivate the land only one time in a year or two to three times, okay. Suppose uh, as a farmer, okay in the this is the season okay the carry season starts now okay the is going on okay right so from every year every year uh, june is the, the june to september that is the carry season okay so we have three seasons so june to september that is the carry season and uh, november december uh, rabi season the winter season and uh, march to april okay the february march april uh, sayad season okay the summer season okay basically in india we have three seasons in agriculture, okay. So, how you are cultivating the land, okay, all three seasons, okay. So, if you are using the land for all three seasons, then yearly you are utilizing the land three times, okay. So, three crops, that means three crops in a year, okay. Approximately four months. So, rice is a four months crop, okay. For example, the delta farmers in Tanjavur, the Kaveri delta region, the farmers, they use the land three times in a year. Okay, because rice is a four months crop, so they grow rice at uh, June to September. Okay, the carib season, rabi season, and the winter season. Sorry, the summer season. Okay, so three seasons in a year. It is called the three crops. Okay, right. So the cropping intensity. So how you effectively you utilize the land in India? Okay, that is called uh, the cropping intensity. How many number of crops you are growing in a particular year? Okay, so at present the average the cropping intensity in India is around. 140 percentage. So, this is the cropping intensity in India. So, what is the meaning of it? 140 percentage. That means, we are utilizing land 1.4 times on an average. Okay, right. So, the formula cropping intensity, grass cropped area divided by net sown area. Okay. So, this is the formula for cropping intensity. 
grass cropped area divided by net zone area. So what is the grass cropped area and the net zone area? Net zone area. Okay, this is the grass cropped area. Okay. So the net zone area in India is around 148 million hectares. Okay, around 150 million hectares. Almost more than 40 percentage of total land area. Okay, in India, the total geographical area of India is 328 million hectares. Okay, out of this, around 148 million hectares are net zone area. That means the area available for cultivation. The agricultural land area, that is the net zone area. Okay, it's around 40 percentage of our total geographical area. Okay, so that is the net zone area. And the grass cropped area, Area used for cultivation in a year. Okay. How many times you are utilizing the land? Okay. Suppose if you are having one hectare of land. Okay. If you are having one hectare of land. Okay. If you are growing uh, the one hectare of land is called a net zone area. Okay. Because the one hectare of land is available for cultivation. Okay. That is a net zone area. Right. If the same land area. The, hect okay, the one hectare of land is utilized uh, how many times in a year? Okay, if you are growing uh, crops, three crops in a year, June to September, again you are cultivating the land for another crop. Okay, first we grow rice and then we grow pulses and then we grow some vegetables. Okay, so three crops in a year are all three seasons rice only. Okay, first season rice, second season rice, third season rice. Okay, right. So you are utilizing the land three times. So your grass crop area is three hectare. Okay, so in a year, the net zone area do not change. Okay, it's the actual land area available for cultivation. And the grass crop area, how many times you are utilizing the land? Okay, so it's three hectares. If you are utilizing the land three times, three hectares. Or only one time. I grow only one crop in a year, one hectare. Both are same. Or two crops in a year. Sometimes uh, the farmers, okay, they grow rice. And the second season, they grow pulses. And the third season, they leave the land fallow. Fallow means without any cultivation. Okay, so two crops in a year. So, 2 hectares. So, the cropping intensity will vary 100%. If you are growing 2 crops in a year, 200 percentage. If you are growing 3 crops in a year, crop intensity will become 300 percentage, okay, into 100. So, 3 hectares divided by 1 hectare into 100, 300 percentage. Okay. So, this is how we are working out the cropping intensity. Okay. Right. So why it is important? Okay, at present okay, in India, the cropping intensity is 140 percentage. That means 1.4 times. Okay, it's around 140 percent. Why it is important at, at this juncture? Okay, recently we are talking about the cropping intensity because this is uh, in the future. Okay, so we are going to surpass China in the world's largest populated country. Okay, so in future we cross China. Okay, overcome China. China overcome Okay, right. So for the future food security, in order to secure the the future generations of food security, we have to increase the number of cropping. Okay, we have to produce more, right? So for that, we have to utilize the land more effectively. Okay, this is about the crop industry is about utilizing the land more effectively. Okay, so if you have, if you can able to grow more crops in a year, then we can produce maximum. We can produce more. We can increase our production. Okay, that secures our the food security. We can increase our food, food production, right? So that's why the cropping intensity is very very important. But why it is not three hundred percentage? Even just to one point four, okay, one forty percentage. So the biggest limiting factor, eh? Ah, irrigation. Okay. So the biggest limiting factor in uh, reducing the cropping intensity is water availability. There are so many factors, okay, but the biggest factor is water availability. So the Cauvery Delta farmers, they can able to raise three crops in a year because of, it's located in the Cauvery Delta region. Okay, so they, they get rain, okay, they get the, 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 through the canal irrigation, so they get the water source throughout the year. Whereas in the central part of India, in Rajasthan, okay, so the drier parts of the India, they depend only on monsoon for, uh, the rainfall is the only source of irrigation. Okay, so the, those here regions they, they have don't uh, the adequate facility of irrigation okay they have depend only on rainfall 
okay so the rainfall period is just a four months period june to september this is the effective rainfall period in india okay so they can cultivate the land only during the the kharif season the monsoon season the remaining season it's very dry they cannot be able to cultivate the crop okay so for those the dry land farmers they are called dry land farmers or rain food farmers because they depend only on rainfall okay so for those farmers they can cultivate the crop only the land only for one time that is during the the kharif season the monsoon season okay in those regions the crop industry is just 100 percentage whereas in the cold delta region the crop industry is around 300 percentage okay so if you work out the average on an average it is around 140 percentage okay so the crop industry is very very important to meet our food security demands for that we have to increase our irrigation potential okay what are the concept okay right sir how is it calculated for all the sectors how is it calculated actually inge namak inda data irukla we have this data the red zone area okay total area under cultivation and we have the cross crop area Okay, I means we can have a cropping industry at 100%. Mm. But if it is right now, yeah, 300%. Is it different? How? Yeah, it differs. Definitely differs from crop to crop. Okay, but uh, not all the crops. Most of the crops are not annual crops. Most of the crops are field crops. Three months crop, four months crop. Okay, some exceptions will be there. How we are average? Like, no, that's what we are doing. Okay, for sugar cane, it's annual crop. Since it's annual crop. the crop industry is only 100% only because we calculate only for yearly yearly basis only okay it comes under only 100% only for annual crops so every crop there is a average average yeah, yeah we can work out for each and every crop we can work out okay at the same time overall we can also work out overall the net zone we we have uh, we have the data net zone area and grass crop area so overall this is overall percentage sugar cane for annual crops it is 100% only okay but annual crops are very less right okay la most of the crops are uh, pulses oil seeds millets cereals okay so mostly in agriculture in the paper 1 uh, most of the topics are like gs okay and a very few concepts uh, the concepts are mostly in the soil science area soil science nutrient management okay in those area there are some concepts there okay otherwise remaining topics are very easy you can easily uh, simply you can read and uh, understand the subject but in paper 2 many topics are conceptual okay in the genetics plant breeding uh, plant physiology they are concept oriented okay so for uh, concepts i will explain clearly okay and moreover in our uh, batch uh, many na okay 50 50 irupanga almost okay and the agree non agree students right so we start from the very basic from the scratch okay for all okay not to understand easily the non agree students i will uh, uh, teach from the very basics of agriculture okay i will explain all the concepts very clearly for the factual area you can read the notes okay i will give you idea okay how to cover the factual area and the conceptual area i will explain clearly okay so we cover the entire syllabus don't worry you have find the five months okay we cover the entire syllabus okay all right and uh, while well, uh, discussing this topic i will uh, link the current affairs where you have to link current affairs okay mostly for the environmental topic we have to link with the current affairs the what's going on okay, uh, recently okay because we have uh, climate change uh, greenhouse effect global warming it's part of our syllabus agriculture okay so in that area we have to link with the current affairs okay only few areas uh, in agriculture we need current affairs okay i will tell you so in our uh, class uh, weekdays class okay it's a regular class weekday okay so 6:30 to 8:30 timing monday to friday okay um and uh, in our class um after completion of each subject okay so we go by uh, paper on paper to alternatively okay 
So first class will be from paper one and the next class will be from paper two, okay? So after completion of each subject, we conduct a test, okay? If we complete a weed science, then we conduct a uh, class test on weed science, okay? So we conduct a class test, uh, material, and I will also share the answer copies, the topos answer copy, how to write, okay? The answer rating session. And every day uh, after each class, okay? I will provide you one question, one model question. 10 marks, 20 marks, or 15 marks, okay? The next day, we will discuss that question. Okay, I will give you daily answer rating practice. Apart from that test, okay? Test is separate. Apart from that, we also have answer rating practice every day, okay? So, these are the features of our course. Yes, okay, test series. After completion of each portion, we conduct the test and at the end of the course, we conduct one full test. Okay. Yes, okay. Doubt sessions, um, you can uh, send me the message, okay. During our class, you can, uh, I will uh, provide break, okay. After completing each topic, each uh, portion, I will provide some time for your uh, doubts, okay, for both online students as well as offline students. And at the end of the lecture also, we provide uh, 10 minutes for a doubt session, okay. So, class is starting from uh, July 18th, next week, okay, next Monday. Next Monday onwards, we have a regular class, okay, July 18th, approximately 4 to 5 months, okay, 4 and after 5 months. So, we complete by November. For all students, uh, if you have studied biology in your uh, plus 1 plus 2, you can choose. Otherwise, it's difficult, okay, and especially paper 2, it's very difficult. Only students with a biology background, they can choose. So, course fee, course details, everything it will available in the, it is available in the, our Shankarai Academy website, okay. For online students, uh, if you want to enroll, you can visit the Shankarai Academy website and you can enroll, you can register and enroll, okay, right. <coughs> So, for uh, current affairs, don't worry about, okay, that's why I told you, okay, in the agriculture, the advantage, uh, the humanity subjects and uh, agriculture, in the humanity subjects, we have to follow current affairs very closely, because most of the questions, the public administration, political science, so in this topic, okay, we have to closely follow current affairs, so most of the questions are linked with the current affairs, okay, but here in agriculture, no need to worry about current affairs, in your regular, anyhow, you have to study current affairs for GS preparation, that's enough. No need to exclusively follow current affairs for uh, agriculture because it's a technical subject. So you have to provide, you have to give the answer what is given in the notes. That's enough. Okay. No need to write the latest uh, research going up. There are a lot of research going on agriculture. Genetics, biotechnology, research Okay. We cannot write all those, right? Just you have to provide what is given in the standard textbooks. That's enough. Yes, all classes are recorded only, okay. So, in our uh, academy, we uh, provide a separate uh, student's ID portal, okay. There will be a separate uh, student's portal will be there. And all the classes, the recorded classes are, uh, the recordings are available in the student's portal. You can watch it at any time. Yes, okay, for uh, Delhi branch, we are uh, going to start um, batch from... Uh, August, offline batch, August first week, okay. So, next week we have orientation session for a Delhi branch and from August uh, first week onwards we have a regular class at Delhi, okay. See, we either you have to refer the standard reference books, okay, or my material, okay. I can say that my material is more than sufficient, okay, 100% I can guarantee you, okay, so it's more than sufficient to cover the entire syllabus, okay, if you are not satisfied or if you are uh, comfortable with your uh, standard textbooks, you can go with it, no problem, okay, I will uh, provide the list of the standard reference books for uh, each and every topic, okay, right, so you can also buy the, uh, all the books are available on Amazon, 
okay you, you can buy the seven reference books okay right but uh, you should not compare panna kodadu you should not do that okay either you have to prepare with our material or you have to prepare with the, the seven reference books and the mistakes na naan panne okay right so you should not do that அது வந்து கிளாஸ் நோட்ஸ் ஓகே ஐ வில் ப்ரொவைட் அடிஷன் டு த மெட்டீரியல் இன் அவர் கிளாஸ் ஆஃப் த டிஸ்கஷன் ஓகே நான் சொல்றேன் இல்லையா டாபிக் ஓகே எவ்ரி டாபிக் ஐ வில் ப்ரொவைட் சம் எக்ஸ்ட்ரா பாயிண்ட்ஸ் ஸோ யூ ஹவ் டு ப்ரிப்பேர் வித் அவர் கிளாஸ் நோட்ஸ் அண்ட் மெட்டீரியல் ஓகே ஸோ இந்த கிளாஸ் ஐ வில் ப்ரொவைட் ஆன்சர் ஸ்ட்ரக்சர் ஸோ ஹவு டு ப்ரெசன்ட் யுவர் ஆன்சர் ஓகே வாட் ஆர் த பாசிபிள் கொஸ்டின்ஸ் ஃப்ரம் திஸ் டாபிக் அதனால நம்ம சொல்லிடுவோம் ஓகே ஸோ பேசுறது தட் யூ ஹவ் டு ப்ரிப்பேர் யுவர் நோட்ஸ் யூ ஹவ் டு டேக் நோட்ஸ் ஃப்ரம் த மெட்டீரியல் ஓகே diagram is very very important <laughs> how can be a science subject without diagram okay diagram is very very important okay if you if you draw diagram well okay and the especially paper 2 okay then definitely there is a chance okay you will get very good score in optional yeah agriculture engineer okay allied subjects they can choose allied uh, okay agriculture engineering uh, biotechnology microbiology and the horticulture okay they can choose no problem so for obc nine times liya okay nine attempts are there okay for obc nine attempts up to 35 years age nine items for each okay ifos ku nine items ias ku nine items okay if you select both then items different items both are for you common prelims for ias and ifos liya but that is the correct strategy we cannot prepare separately in the year und i am going to prepare only for ias after next year und i am going to only prepare for ifos that you cannot do adu unda yaarku suitable aagum appadina suppose if you are engineering graduate you are choosing some other optional apart from agriculture in that case we can uh, decide okay va but uh, if you are agri graduate with agri optional then this is the correct way okay so you, you have to opt, opt for both okay now the you have to prepare the same the option agriculture option is same uh, gs portions are same everything is same sa everything is same okay except that in the ifos you have to prepare one more optional that we can do after the completion of uh, cs mains we will have uh, one and a half months time irukum between the uh, cs mains and ifos mains so in the time period we can cover other than sonelia i can provide you uh, how to prepare for botany i will guide you okay and up last time pathina four students okay ellame agri botany combination they didn't go for coaching for botany illa ponadala avanga okay they attended the coaching only for agriculture okay so with my guidance they cleared with agri botany combination so my suggestion is uh, you have to opt for both okay uh, so especially agri graduates solran agri optional okay that's a good idea ena ore adra undena the many student poi unga pathi nichinga last year undu pathina they cleared both okay one of my student kartikeyan in pathina avanga undu in 2018 okay so they cleared both idhula undu topper ifis la topper civil service la undu ips she got ips but uh, they, she decided to choose ifis because she will get the tamad cadre she got tamad cadre okay anala avanga enna pannitaanga she chose ifos okay adha mari undanadhu there is a chance okay you will get you will clear both ore samayathula undanadhu rendu service vechittu you can appo undanadhu and the confusion undu jaliya irukum edhula polam appdi solittu i will check your answers so every day we uh, after the class we provide one model question and we discuss the next day okay the answer for that question right yeah okay after the class you can meet me no problem okay i will come to academy regularly and even uh, saturday sunday uh, i will be available okay in the academy so offline students you can meet me okay personally no problem right and uh, 
if you have any doubts okay this is my contact number so still you have any doubts in choosing optional if you have any confusion you can call me okay so 9786618217 okay this is my personal number you can give me a message and call me i will give you okay right. thank you so on the number kuduthirken illaya okay further avangala edha doubts irundha nanadha you can ask me okay right not only for agriculture endha or optional irundha seri okay if there is any confusion choosing optional illa vera edha basic adha gs preparation enna panna you are freshers right okay so on the pre preparation start pandradha the basic idea okay you can call me no problem right <coughs>